Hello everyone, I'm Developer Relations Engineer David jones Chilardi, and right now I'd like to bring you through some tips and tricks when using Langflow. There are some options and maybe some hidden capabilities that you might not be aware of that can help up-level your Langflow game. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. And let's see what we got. All right, first thing I want to do is when you come in the Langflow, I'm going to go ahead and create just a blank canvas here. Okay, and I'm just going to pull out a chat input. The chat input itself isn't really relevant to this part, but you'll see what I'm getting at here in a moment. So if I click on a component, you'll know this dialogue that pops up. And there is a little ellipsis here, this more ellipsis. In there, there is the advanced section. Now for any component that you have, there are actually a set of parameters that may not be exposed by default, right? One of them in particular is this session ID right here. We're going to talk about that here in a moment as we kind of get further into this. Um, but just notice that you'll see that there's other parameters. And then there is a little uh, radio button here that allows you to determine whether or not it's being shown or not, right? And that's being displayed. That's talking about being displayed here. So again, the chat input doesn't actually display the session ID by default, but we'll see where that comes into play in a moment here. Now, another cool feature is that let's pretend for a moment you are working on a flow and you want to create another flow, um, you know, right from where you're where you're at. Right. Well, as long as you have at least a component here on your canvas, if you go to the little drop down over here in the top left under your uh, flow name and say new. Boom. Notice I have a new flow ID up top. Now, what it actually did was created a new flow, but it saved the one that I was working in. Right. So. I'm going to go ahead and just pull some component in here and let's take a look. Now, notice I have this untitled document, has my chat input, and then I have this untitled document one that has my prompt, right? So really simple examples in this case, um, but kind of just, you know, showcasing um, a neat little feature you may not have known about from that standpoint. Okay, let me go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup here. We don't really need these. I'm just going to go ahead and pop those out. Okay, cool. So what I want to do now is look more into some of those parameters that I was just talking about. In this case, I've actually got a setup, which is the memory chatbot. Um, this is actually one of the default templates that you have. Uh, so if you go to a new project, you'll see memory chatbot. Um, it'll set you up with the same thing you see here. Now, take a look at this chat input. By default, you'll notice this session ID is actually exposed, right? And again, if I go to the ellipsis in advanced, here's my session ID, and it is displayed here. And it's set to this value of my session ID in this case. It can honestly be whatever it is, uh, whatever, it, you know, it, you could put whatever arbitrary value in there or something. The key is that, at least for the session ID, that it matches, right? Whatever it is, it needs to match. Now, I'm not going to get into the details in memory chatbot so much, but this really comes into play when you want to have, say, multiple threads of conversation with your LLM. Um, so, so it's just another case of where having... Um, you know, a, a parameter, like a hidden parameter, if you will, you can expose that and actually start to use it and get some extra functionality. This also comes into play with the other uh, components, like the model components. If you take a look at advanced here, you notice I have a whole different set of parameters. So I really encourage you to take a look at the advanced sections of these components and see what parameters are there, um, because you may learn about functionality you weren't aware of. One of those things is stream. So I want you to see something. I'm going to go ahead and build this flow. Watch what it does. It takes a moment as it's kind of like chunking on the OpenAI model. It's not because the model's slow or anything like that, but what it actually just did is it ran through the whole model and then it had to wait for the whole response to come back in one shot before it could give me the green check mark and finish building and say that it was complete. Now, if I wanted to say speed that up a little bit and come in here, I can say, let's go ahead and turn on streaming. I want to display that so I can affect change. So now you see it's here in my component. And now when I run through the build, because boop, you see it popped right through. Now if I pop down into my playground, you'll see that it's actually streaming the text out as compared to um, waiting for the whole response to come back before it actually responds. Um, whether or not you use that is totally up to you. Um, but now you know that it is a feature that is there that you may not have been aware of before. Okay, great. So notice now in our memory chatbot, um, we have this inspect memory component. This is really just a text component um, that is wired up to the output of my chat memory. And what this does is it displays a text output in the playground. 
Um, so this is really nice when I want to troubleshoot stuff, right? So if I'm coming in here, especially for the memory chatbot, and I'm trying to get an idea of the interactions back and forth between myself and the AI, I can come in here and I can, you know, analyze that. And I can actually look at it and kind of, you know, use that to troubleshoot and such. Um, but there are other options here, especially when you get into cases where um, you're having multiple threads of conversation. Doing it with text might be a little hard to discern actually what's going on. Um, so there is, in fact, another option. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move over to uh, another flow that's slightly modified. This is the same exact memory chatbot, but instead of the text output, I have a records output. And the records output would actually will actually display things in a more tabular format. Now, how did I know that? Right? How did I know that this was even an option for me? Herein lies another feature you may not have known about in Langflow. So you know how we've got the little nodes here that we can drag from node to node, and that's how we connect up our components. But there's one, if I hover on a node, it'll actually show me all of the available component connections that I can make uh, and such. But an even cooler feature is so I click on it. It will expose all of the various components that are valid for that particular type of node, right? And notice here in my output, not only do I have a text output, which is what we were using before, but I also have a records output, right? And that's what I'm using in this particular case. So like I said, the records output will actually, um, will give a more tabular output and gives you a bit more control over the way that the data is laid out and everything. So let's go ahead and uh, go through an example here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this real quick. Actually, I should probably ask it a question. Let's see, so while in the EU, am I allowed to take pictures in public places? Now immediately you'll notice that I have this tabular output, right? Now I didn't turn streaming on in this case, so it's gonna wait for the whole thing to come back, there it goes. And then you can see that I have this, this tabular view. Now while you're here in this view, um, you can like remove particular columns if they are not useful to you. Maybe I don't need session ID right now. Right? Maybe I want to open this up a little bit. Um, and what's really cool about this is if I go back and open it again, that'll just come right back. It's not saved. You're not going to permanently remove columns or anything like that. It's just a little helper function right? while you're kind of analyzing stuff. If you want to remove some pieces of data, you can do that. Now, this becomes a lot more useful as I do a lot more um, with my LLM. So let's go ahead and ask another question. How about government buildings? Right? Kind of an idea what that answer is going to be. Right, and you can start to see ah, I'm getting more showing up here in my records output. And again, you know, I'm not really interested in session ID for this particular case, but now I can start to see where the response is, this kind of call and response, right? I asked it a question, the AI responded, I asked it another question, so on and so forth. Now that's pretty cool, but over time things you know can start to get a lot more. Um, complex, especially as you have multiple threads of conversation going and everything like that. So there is, as you're, as you're storing this data, right, and you're using this records output, there's actually another feature here. If I go back down to our uh, flow dropdown and say logs, you'll find there's a message log. This should look really familiar. And it has some of the same functionality. So again, if there's certain things that I'm not really interested in, I want to, you know, get some space for some other things and, and such like that, I can just kind of move those things around and such. Now, in this case, I only have one thread of conversation going on, right? What happens if I have another thread going on? So I had the session ID set to uh, customer chat EMEA. I'm going to change this to customer chat North America. North America. And again, it is important, by the way, that your um, that your session IDs match or that's not going to work the way you expect. Um, but now I can have another conversation. Now, what's super cool about this is, of course, it should not know the context of what I was just talking about because I've just changed the thread. It doesn't. And then now if I come back to my logs, though, I can actually see the whole set of interactions, right? I'm going to open some stuff up a little bit, right? And notice that I have different session IDs. So under the hood, but in those global variables I was using, the customer chat EMEA and cluster, customer chat North America, I stored different UUIDs. And that's what you're seeing here. So if you imagine then I have a lot of conversations and threads going, it makes it very easy for me to be able to discern which one is which. Now, another feature, this is an experimental um, component that is really useful when you're working with the logs is under experimental, it's called clear message history. So what I can do with this is let's say I want to really just focus on the conversations I'm having with North America and I'm going to filter out 
those Chattamia ones, I can go ahead and do this. Notice that I just said, this is the session ID I want to clear. Come back over to my logs. And now I'm focused on only the ones here in North America. Okay, there's one last feature that I want to show you. I'm going to go back to a component, click on the code block this time. And let's say that I want to make some modification, right? So I added this variable with some value and I store that. Now, if I take a look back in here, you can see the modifications there. Now, okay, great. But maybe I want to persist this change and I want to make it available to all of my flows to use. So if I hit this little save here, then that will not only persist it, but notice what happened over here on the left-hand side. Under basic components, you see saved and I have this new component. Now, if I come back to my original and I go ahead and remove that modification, right? Now it's not there anymore, but if I bring over uh, the new one or the one I saved, you can see the modifications there. And what's more is if I exit out of this flow, you'll see that it stored uh, this component, this modified custom component locally. And then if I go to another flow, it is available in that flow as well, right? Uh, so it's a really cool way to very quickly, honestly, go and make changes to your components and make them available to uh, all of your flows. And if I want to go ahead and remove that, I can just say, remove it. And there you go. Those were just some tips and tricks that I hope that you can use to help level up your Langflow experience. And with that, everybody have a great day. Take care.